Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a review and lip swatch of my entire Beauty Bakery Lip Whip collection. Um, this is another indie brand and if you've watched my previous videos you've probably noticed that I enjoy supporting indie brands just because I feel like there's some brilliant products out there and also some shades that you can't necessarily find in your major brands. Um, so for those of you who don't know Beauty Bakery, they are a black owned makeup brand or BOM is the acronym and it was founded by a woman by the name of Kashmir Nicole. I did a bit of a Google search on her and I found that she was actually featured on Beyonce's website during Breast Cancer Awareness Month because she is a breast cancer survivor um, and I was really touched by her story um, that I read on, on her um, website. She did a testimonial and it sounds like she's a very headstrong woman and very passionate about her brand which I think is great. Now onto the product itself. These retail for 20 US dollars from the website or you can also get them for 34 Australian dollars from Lipstick Public which is an online stockist for this brand. Um, but every now and again Beauty Bakery do run sales so sometimes it's worth getting it off the website even though you've got to pay shipping. Um, but for memory I think it's maybe 13 US dollars so it's not really unreasonable although the exchange rate is not that great right now. Um, so for this price you're getting 5 milliliter of product which is equivalent to um, your Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick although I think you get uh, 5.6 so it's roughly about the same and also based on the current exchange rate right now um, it's probably on par with your Stilla Liquid Lipstick or your Too Faced Melted Mattes. Now this seems to be a product that people either love or they hate and I can sort of see why. There are inconsistencies from shade to shade and also um, between the mattes and metallics there are differences in performance. These also aren't necessarily the easiest to apply and they are fairly drying so if you are someone that really doesn't like dry, um, that dry matte texture then this is probably not for you. Having said that, I think the saving grace is the fact that they are so long lasting. This is by far the most long lasting liquid lipstick I've ever tried. They last through oily food, through steaks, through drinks. I have literally um, gone through a whole banquet of Spanish food which has lots of oil, lots of, you know, and I don't eat cautiously and it just stayed. So I was very impressed with it which is why I, after buying one, I just went out and bought a whole heap of other shades to try. Now I also wanted to talk about ingredients because I like to know what I'm putting onto my face and you know, I, from the feedback I've gotten in the past, I think you like to know as well um, all that sort of information. So I'm just going to give you the down low. Um, the ingredients are on the back of the packaging which I think is very helpful. Um, basically it just looks like there's a whole bunch of um, silicones, thickening agents, emollients and preservatives. Um, now all of these lip whips are vegan and they're also cruelty free which I think is fantastic. Um, I did copy and paste the ingredients into Google just to see if it is a unique formula because also there's been a you know there's been commentary around whether it's private labeled or not and I believe it is because there are products out there with the same ingredients. Um, I personally haven't tried them so I don't know if it's exactly the same in performance but my feeling is that they are especially because usually indie brands if they're handmade they will state on the website that they're handmade, they're um, made in small batches all that sort of stuff but there's nothing on the Beauty Bakery website that implies that so my feeling is that they are private labeled. I personally don't mind that because I feel like um, you know there's been a lot of care into the packaging um, and the shade selection as well and realistically if you're going to be launching a makeup brand you can't necessarily always make them yourself so some people do and I think that's great but I personally don't mind as long as the product works well it performs well that's what I care about. So that's enough rambling for me. Let's get on to the lip swatches. If you want to see a particular shade, I'm going to leave timestamps down below. So I do have 15 shades, although I am missing Ginger Snap because I use it all the time and it's probably somewhere in a bag or work. Um, I'm going to go through these uh, by shade. So reds, nudes, pinks, browns, and then metallics. And then within those categories, I'm going to go through them alphabetically. First are the red shades. This one is Cranberry Stiletto and it is a berry shade. I'm going to be swatching all these liquid lipsticks under natural light 
as I wanted to give a comparison because the lip swatches are actually under artificial light. This is actually the first one I ever bought from the brand and I bought it off Lipstick Republic as they sell a whole bunch of indie brands including Beauty Bakery so I thought that was really convenient. I just wanted to try it out for myself especially because of all the claims that it's smudge proof and I'm sure you've seen that YouTube video where there's a woman who's got the swatches and she's running underwater and she also runs her fingers through it and it doesn't budge. So I wanted to see for myself how they performed and let me tell you I was really impressed with this one because I ate steaks, I ate oily Chinese food, I drank wine and it really didn't budge which was a first for me and I was very impressed and went out and bought more. I guess the issue that I have with this shade and some of the others, as you can see as I'm applying it, it is a bit streaky as it doesn't spread that evenly and the formula is also on the thin side so it does need to be built up and you will need to dip in multiple times for that opaque finish. I did read somewhere that the best way to apply this is to layer it on using long strokes and then using patting motions over any patchy areas which is what you can see me doing there with the doe foot applicator. Also according to the website you are supposed to wait five minutes for it to dry down before layering it. Um, however you know obviously I didn't do that and to be honest I don't really have the patience for that but you might get slightly better results if you apply it that way. So overall, it's not a unique red shade, however, I do like it mainly because of the staying power and I think it looks nice. When I did the kiss test, there was no transference, which is awesome. By the way, before I applied it, I did exfoliate my lips and used a really heavy duty moisturizer before application. So I did attempt to take this off using an oil free makeup wipe, but don't even bother because you are going to be rubbing your lips for a while. So instead, I'm taking this off with an oil-based makeup remover, and they do suggest this on the website. And there's unfortunately a bit of staining. Second shade is Mon Chéri, which is a term of endearment in French. I've noticed that quite a few of these have a French theme. Anyway, this is a vibrant blue-based red. It's another classic shade that I think probably everyone has in their collection, but it's nonetheless pretty wearable, and that's why I like having shades like these in my collection. Again, like the previous shade, it does need to be built up and best way to do that is using long strokes to get your first layer on, letting it dry, which I didn't do, and then going back in a few more times where you need it. Personally, I rarely wear lip liners, mainly because I'm lazy to do that extra step. However, I have seen a few people use a lip liner for this, and if you do, I would suggest using it just to outline the lips rather than shading your whole lip with the lip liner, just because it's not really meant to be worn on top of something else because the staying power is then going to be affected. Although it's a bit of a catch train too because some of these shades really do need to be worn on top of something else just because they're not as opaque. The reds, however, I felt like I could get away with not using any liner even though I do have quite pigmented lips. I also wanted to mention that these feel quite tacky when they go on and then when they dry down, they kind of create a film-like texture over your lip and some shades definitely feel more uncomfortable than others in order of which ones feel the least like cling wrap, it goes nudes and pinks, browns and oranges, reds, and then metallics are definitely the worst. So yeah, nice tomato red shade, bit of a pain in the ass to get off, but I can put up with that because I know it's going to stay put. So with the kiss test, I probably needed to wait a little longer because there was a bit of transference and all the layering obviously didn't help there. So if you want to layer it more, you're going to have to wait for it to completely dry down. Again, these are amongst the hardest liquid lipsticks to remove and the reds tend to stain a little, so I'm taking this off with Clinique's Take the Day Off Makeup Remover. Next are the nudie pink shades, and there's also a light move shade in here that didn't really fit into any other category. Here is Fortune Cookie, and it's a neutral beige nude. I actually bought this as part of the Hot Cocoa set, which came with six lipsticks for the price of five, but in retrospect, I wish I hadn't because there are two shades in here which I absolutely hate. And, you know, I guess sometimes it's quite um, tempting to buy a set because they're quite good value. But you're not always going to like all the shades in there, which was definitely my case. But anyway, I don't mind this one because it's not too light and doesn't make me look washed out like a lot of nudes do. And because it's on the neutral side, it's not too warm, not too cool. I think it would suit a lot of skin tones. I do, however, still prefer warmer and slightly darker nudes, but this one isn't too bad. And it passes the kiss test with flying colors, much like most of the nudes. This comes off pretty easily with an oil-based makeup remover and it doesn't stain my lips. Next is French Toast and it basically looks like a concealer on me. 
I would describe this as a light cream nude shade. It's definitely the worst performing in the nudes category. It just lacks opacity when I apply it on. You can see my red lips coming through and it just looks really wrong. It's like putting on a bad patchy concealer on the lips. This one is definitely a skip for me just because the shade makes me look lifeless. It lacks pigmentation and it's just overall terrible. It's probably the worst liquid lipstick I own. I mean, if you have lighter skin tone, you're still going to have those pigmentation issues and you'll have to layer on quite a lot. So for that reason, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I guess also that's why I don't like buying sets um, because I'm not going to get any use out of this particular shade. So even though I'm saving a bit of money, you know, I'm only going to be using four out of the six shades in here. So I would suggest just buying the shades that you appeal to you and at least you'll be using all of them. So yeah, you know what I'm talking about? It just looks really bad. But at least there's no transference and even if there was, you probably wouldn't be able to see it because it matches my skin tone. On the upside, it was relatively easy to get off and it didn't stain. Next is another one that again, I really don't like and this is the shade Louvre Palace. Just be careful when you're referencing photos off the official website because they are quite edited and this one in particular looks a lot more pink in the photo than it is in reality. As you can see, it's basically a coral shade, um, but on the website it does describe it as a salmon hue, but I know a lot of people aren't gonna read the description. This shade does apply a bit better than French Toast, but it's still not that pigmented and you will need to do at least two coats, at least. Again, this one came in the Hot Cocoa set. I don't think I would have actually bought it if it hadn't come in the set, just because I don't really like corals, I don't think they suit my skin tone. But if you like corals, this one might be appealing to you. So yeah, um, I don't really like this one mainly because it clashes with my skin tone. However, if I had to pick between a concealer looking liquid lipstick or coral lips, I'd choose this one. This one also passes the kiss test and doesn't transfer once dried down. Like the previous shade, there's no staining but my lips feel really dry which is why I didn't swatch these in one sitting, basically because I'm not a masochist. Next we have Swiss Mocha Frappe, which I would describe as a grey shade with purple or mauve undertones. This one actually really reminds me of Marshmallow from Colourpop, which I believe is a ultra satin lipstick. However, that one does pull more purple. Similarly with Louvre Palace, it is more pigmented than Fresh Toast, but you still need two coats. And you know, the way I see these lipsticks is that they're a bit more high maintenance to apply, but once dried down, they're actually very low maintenance to have on just because the stain power is very, very good. Other liquid lipsticks I have, like Joseph Colors and Makeup Monsters, they're much easier to apply, but they do need to be touched up throughout the day, especially if you've eaten. And if I'm going out for dinner and want to wear a liquid lipstick, I usually wear these ones because I'm confident that my lips are still gonna be on. And like the other nudes, they pass the kiss test and don't transfer, and they don't stain your lips either, which is really appreciated. Last in this category we have Versailles, which is a beautiful dusty rose shade and one of my favorite shades because it's quite close to my actual lip color. So my lips but better sort of concept. It's also very work friendly, so I tend to reach for it quite a lot. I found this one to apply quite well. It was pigmented and not streaky. However, again, because the formula is on the thin side, I would recommend two coats. I do say I have worn this to work quite a bit and the lasting power on this isn't as good as the darker shades after I eat and drink. However, it doesn't fade away patchily or anything. I mean, I guess it's hard to tell because it's quite close to my lip color, so it doesn't really wear away very obviously. This one passes a kiss test and can be removed with an oil-based remover without staining. Next, we have the brown and burnt orange shades, which are my favorites. First one is Ginger Snap, and it's a beautiful burnt orange shade. For those of you who know and love Miami Fever, which is the Kathleen Lights collaboration with Ofra, you'll probably really enjoy this one as well. Compared to Miami Fever, this one is darker and richer. And actually, this is the only one I noticed didn't have a label on the bottom, which usually has the name and the jar at the bottom, which tells you how long it lasts. So by process of elimination, I realized that this one was Ginger Snap. And by the way, they all have a life shelf of 12 months from opening. And to be honest, I can see myself using this one up a lot quicker than that just because I reach for it the most. I think mainly because I wear a lot of brown and bronze shades like the one I'm wearing here and I think it complements quite well. 
Anyway, I'd rate this as my favorite of all the lip whips just because the color is so beautiful and it also performs really well. It applies easily, it's pigmented, it's not streaky, and it lasts on my lips for around 12 hours or more, basically until I take it off. And I really wish all of the other lip whips perform like this. This one had a bit of transference around the rim and that might have been because I didn't wait for it to dry down completely, but I have test driven this particular shade many times and it hasn't transferred. It also comes off fairly easily with an oil-based makeup wipe and didn't stain. Lastly, we have Small Dove, which is a mid-tone brown shade with warm undertones. Swatched on the arm, you can't really tell, but when you apply on the lips, it actually looks like there are reddish undertones as well. I have quite a number of brown lipsticks in my collection, and I find this one relatively wearable because it's not too dark and grungy, and again, it pulls more warm. So as you can see, it is applying a bit streakily, is that a word? And you can still see my red lips peeking through. So this one definitely needs two coats in order to even out the pigment, I guess. So yeah, this is what it looks like with just one coat and it does look like there is some unevenness. So you definitely need to go in with another. I mean, you can definitely make these work, but it is more effort than other liquid lipsticks in the same price range. But none of those lipsticks last as long as this one does, so it is a bit of a trade-off in my opinion. Also, it's interesting to note that there aren't any reviews on the official website because I think if Beauty Bakery did allow customers to review their products, they may consider reformulating to make these more opaque because it seems like a reoccurring um, opinion. And just like what Makeup Monsters did when they first released their metallic liquid lipsticks, a lot of people weren't happy with the formula and they took on that feedback and did reformulate, which I think is really good. So this one also had a bit of transference with the Kiss Test as well, I think because I didn't allow it to dry down completely because I'm very impatient. Um, but this one did come off pretty easily with an oil-based makeup remover, although there was a bit of staining, which isn't ideal. Lastly, we have the metallic shades, which were added to the Lip Whip line fairly recently. And I must say, I wish I had just gotten one instead of five because they're a bit of a letdown. The first is Apple Crisp, and I think the name pretty much says it all. It's an apple red shade with glitter particles. Um, but out of all the metallics, I found this one to have the least glittery sheen and actually looks more matte than metallic, which is kind of a disappointment. So as I'm applying it, you can see that the consistency is really thin, probably thinner than your normal matte lip whip, which I suppose in my experience, I have noticed that duochromes and glittery metallics tend to not be as thick, maybe because it's harder to get that balance of pigmentation and metallic texture. I'm not really sure. However, this one is so thin to the point where it looks quite watery. I mean, I don't mind liquid lipsticks which have a thin consistency like Makeup Monsters as long as they are pigmented, but I feel like the pigment is really lost here and you need to build it up quite a lot. Definitely more than two layers to get anywhere close to what you see on the website. It does pass the kiss test, but this one is still a pass for me as I don't think it's anything special or unique and it was particularly difficult to get an opaque finish. To me, this acted more like a lip topper, which if that's your thing, go for it. This one was a bit more stubborn to get off um, and it did definitely stain my lips. Next we have Buried, which is a Berry Burgundy metallic shade. As you can see from the arm swatch, it doesn't look very promising because it has a very watery texture. And this one performed pretty poorly. It applies quite patchily and lacks pigmentation. And you know, again, it just seems to work more like a lip topper or maybe a lip stain, which is what this one definitely looks like rather than, you know, an opaque metallic liquid lipstick. And I found that in the past, you know, there's been a lot of hit and misses when it comes to metallic liquid lipsticks. The only brand that I know does it well is Dose of Colors. And this one, I mean, doesn't come anywhere close. It doesn't have that pigmentation. It, it applies so streakily. It doesn't even have that metallic sheen that you would expect, considering it's supposed to be metallic. I think next to French Toast, this is probably the next worst lip whip that I've ever tried, and I wouldn't recommend this shade to anyone. Next we have Cinnamon Roll, which is a coppery bronze shade with warm undertones, and it's probably one of the better performers out of all the metallic shades that I have. So first off the bat, you can tell that this one is at least a metallic shade. Um, the metallic sheen is a, a lot more obvious than the previous two shades, which is why I think this one is slightly better. It is still quite thin and fairly patchy, so you'll definitely need a few layers. 
as it doesn't look great after one. And as you layer it on a bit more, you can see that it pulls a little bit red um, and actually really reminds me of Dose of Colors Teddy, which was a limited edition. I really wish Dose of Colors would bring out more metallics because their metallic liquid lipsticks are the best that I have tried. And they are not uh, lacking in pigment at all. Having said that, I have gotten compliments when I've worn this and I do think it's a beautiful shade once built up. This one actually did have a little bit of transference when I did the kiss test and I think it's because of all the layers that I've had to add, probably didn't dry down properly. This one wasn't the easiest to remove but it did come off with an oil based remover. I have noticed with the metallics, some of them do leave a metallic residue which this one did. Next we have Royal Tea which is a metallic burgundy plum shade. And it looks quite vampy. It really reminds me of Dose of Colors Corset, which is a beautiful color. So as I'm applying it, you can tell that, again, this one looks like a lip topper or a lip gloss. It doesn't have that impactfulness that you'd expect a metallic lip to have. And that's mainly because it just lacks that pigmentation. And it's really disappointing. I feel like this shade could have been really nice. But, you know, you have to layer on so much in order for it to work. And by the time you add all those layers on, it starts to get more and more uncomfortable. It takes a longer time to dry and it's just not practical. So, yeah, this is what it looks like after about five or six layers. It looks pretty decent, but a pain in the ass to apply. It did pass the kiss test surprisingly given how many times I had to layer it. And again, these metallics aren't the easiest to remove. They do tend to stain and leave glitter particles behind, so you do have to scrub extra hard. And I think at this point I was about to do a lip mask because my lips just felt crap. Next we have the Grape Life, which is a grape purple shade. And the swatch looks streaky so I'm guessing it's gonna look streaky on the lips too. Looks promising, it looks promising and what do you know it's streaky. Just like Buried it's got that same issue and this one seems to be more obvious than Buried because it's a purple shade so because purple is not very similar to my lip color you can really tell where there's unevenness also, I'd like to point out that out of all these shades, this one has the most glittery texture and you can really tell because there isn't very much of a metallic sheen. It's mostly just glitter. And I would have preferred a more finely milled metallic glitteriness. Even if there's glitter particles, I don't mind, but big chunks of glitter are just a no-no. And this is what this one is. It's just not flattering. It doesn't feel comfortable and it looks very um, cheap. This one also passed the kiss test as there was no transference once dried down. And like the other ones, it did stain a bit and it did leave glitter shimmery bits everywhere all over my lips. Some people might like that, but not for me. Last of the metallics is Space Cake and it is a metallic grey blue shade. I actually think the concept of the shade is really nice but again it just slips and slides all over the place and the pigmentation is questionable. It just it doesn't look good but I mean you can build it up you just need to be very patient and you need to have a lot of time on your hands and if you're willing to do that then it will look nice. My main concern with the shade is that on the occasion that I have worn this, I went to have lunch and then afterwards noticed that it was coming off on the inside in chunks and it just looked very unappealing. And it was a bit of a surprise because I haven't experienced that with any of the other lip whips. So this might just be one that sits in the drawer and every now and again I wear it for filming or for photos, but it's certainly not one that I'd want to wear out given it wore very badly. So for the kiss test, there wasn't any transference. The transference only occurred after I ate, so you can't see it there. Um, when I did take it off, there wasn't any staining, but again, there was a metallic sheen that was left on my lips. 
from all the glitter particles. Okay, so that was everything. Um, my lips are feeling pretty crappy right now, so I've got my trusty Demise ointment with me and I've just layered that on. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time. If you want to see any more swatch videos, give me some suggestions and I'll try my best. Ha, ha, ha.